Hello everyone, my name is MD and welcome to another video. This is the build tutorial video of the Villager Apexel Iron Farm, but the farm we'll be building is not the one from my first video. This is a tweaked version with a few changes I will quickly go through before we start building. Number 1. The number of villagers has reduced from 84 to 72. So also brings down the number of modules required and therefore the size. Now you may be thinking, oh, less villagers means less iron. But that's where the second change comes in. The farm is much more efficient. The old farm with 84 villagers makes 9750 iron per hour, while the new one makes 11100 iron per hour with only 72 villagers. That's an increase from 72% max efficiency to 96% max efficiency, which means there's no longer an efficiency need. The farm also chunk loads itself now, meaning you don't have to worry about hooking it up to an external loader. There are a few other small changes that I won't go over in this video, but if you want more details, it'll be in a pinned message in the tech discussion channel of the new tech discord server linked below, where you can also ask any questions you may have. If you plan on building the farm, you need to look out for a few things. You need to be running Java Minecraft in versions higher than 1.16.2. The server should be running vanilla or close to vanilla software like Fabric. Paper or spigot servers in your fox can break the farm depending on the configuration. You will need to have access to two villagers through outposts or patrols and get at least two villagers which can be bred up in the villager breeder I have included in the video. Building the farm from start to finish takes around 5 hours. This is very important. Do not start building the farm at any point between Y100 and Y130 unless you want to break a ton of bedrock on the nether roof. I'm sorry I didn't make these changes before and get the video out sooner, but I don't think any more videos have to be made on this farm. If you find the editing low quality and very fast paced, I apologize, but the video would go on for over an hour otherwise. Recording and editing took me a very long time and a lot of things came up, so I'm sorry for the late release. But I want to thank everyone that subscribed, liked and shared the first video. It means a lot to me and I hope you'll do it for this video too. Now on with the tutorial. I'm using the Lightmatica mod to show you a material list for the farm, which I will slowly scroll through. You can also find this list in the description. You can use any colored glass and any solid block instead of smooth stone. The grey glass is for a platform just below bed level for viewing and helps a lot when loading the villagers. You will also need 20 buckets and 1 flint and steel. These are the same materials packed into shulker boxes. Here are the materials needed for the nether side which will also self-load the farm. In addition to this, here are some items that will help you when building. A silk touch pickaxe is recommended. To start, find a nice plain or plateau-like area. Make sure it's in a place where you can easily get a couple of villagers to. Press F3 and G or function F3G to turn on chunk borders. The farm doesn't have to be chunk aligned, but it helps a lot with building to have the lines as direction. Roughly clear out a 30 by 30 area centered on the chunk in the middle and light up the area. You will need to make sure this farm is a few blocks in the air, but if you build it on the ground or underground, make sure the area 6 blocks away in each direction of the farm is spawn proof. Next, you will want to set up a villager breeder. The quickest and simplest way I found is just placing the beds like so in an 18 long 4 wide strip and having two 9 by 9 crop farms adjacent. To set up the crop area, leave a block from the end of the bed row, move 5 blocks away and place a slab in the ground. Water log it, then place a compost row on top. Leave a gap of 8 blocks and place the same slab compost row configuration. Use a hoe on all dirt blocks within 4 blocks of the composters and plant carrots or potatoes in the area. Take the leaves and surround the breeder, leaving a gap between the beds and the walls and place sea lanterns on the composters. Then place a few other composters spread around the wall. Bring over your villagers using a composter to load them in. Give the now farmer villagers a few stacks of carrots or potatoes and some bone bin. And then after making sure no other mobs can get in, you can EFK at the breeder for around 7-8 to eight Minecraft days. They won't have finished breeding to full capacity, but at this point you can start building the farm and they will have finished by then. Sleeping the nights and distributing extra carrots and bone meal to the farmers during this time 
close the time we have to spend in real life. Now go to the chunk you had selected earlier, find the center and fill it up to your chosen height. Using the light blue chunk lines as a reference, make a square ring 8 blocks wide with temporary blocks and then place scaffolding to make a platform as large as the scaffolding allows. Find and mark the center of the chunk. Count 6 blocks from the center 2 by 2 and place an observer on the 6th block with the stop arrow pointing to the left when viewed from the center and place 4 such observers at the back and a solid block after that. On top of that, put a note block, 2 observers pointing away from it and glass on top of all 3. Opposite the direction of the bottom observers, place 3 repeaters on fold away. Add a sticky piston holding sneak and place an observer pointing down at the end of it. Place a solid block diagonally to the observer and two sticky pistons behind facing the clock, with an observer pointing into the solid block in front of the piston. Place a note block in front of this observer and put an observer pointing towards the center. Create a W shape with glass and solid blocks and add two full delay repeaters on the glass. At the end, fill it up like so and place a sticky piston on the side of the solid block in the center. Then place the 2x2 of glass above the sticky piston. On top of the sticky pistons, place two note blocks and a temporary block above. Add two redstone blocks and three slime on top of that, pointing towards the center. Place a temporary block on the middle slime and place a downwards facing sticky piston against it. Add a solid block with the lever above the piston. Spawn proof the clock area by placing glass on all areas where solid top surfaces would be. On the outer side of the clock, place a sticky piston facing outwards, diagonally under the observer, and put an upwards observer on its face. Place three glass above and a downwards pointing observer adjacent, on the side of the clock. Leave a gap and place a glass block below and another two diagonally up. Place an observer in the direction of the glass slope and a power rail on the bottom glass in the same orientation. Leaving a two block gap, continue the glass strip on both ends and add some power rails. Follow this step closely. Place the rail below you, then in front. Break the first rail and place one on the left. Repeat this but mirrored on the right. Continue the glass strips until you cross over a chunk border. Then turn inwards and continue, forming a square. Continue the rails to the end of a side. The left side when viewed from the center should reach the end while the right will be one shot. Break the two glass blocks to the right of the middle vertical blue line with silk touch and set up the same rail observer combination as before. If your rails don't stay on, just place a redstone block next to this rail and break it. On the rail lines, place upwards pointing observers two blocks apart, starting above the diode observers like so, and diagonal on the corners continuing all the way around. When complete, place droppers in a clockwise direction like so, leaving a gap between each point. Then place hoppers with their outputs going clockwise. On the side of the upwards observers, place solid blocks on the external side. Now add comparators facing up. I'm too lazy to explain this, I'll just play this slowly so you can follow it easier. Now fill in the flow area at this level using the grey glass. Place composters on the hoppers and glass on the droppers. At the cell bases, place an upwards observer, a leaf block to the side diagonal to the slime, and a sea lantern next to it away from the center. Around this time, your villagers should have finished breeding. You can remove the water sources, composters, and crops from the farm, and giving the remaining food to the villagers. When you look at the beds at night, all of them should be occupied. In total, you should have 72 villagers. Now break the beds and pack them into boxes. At the farm, place the beds like so. The pillows should be right next to the slime. On the cells observer, place a solid block, glass above the leaf, and sticky piston on the sea land. Now place a comparator on the glass, compost on the piston, and note block on the solid block. Use extra leaves to fill a level in the composter. Put a button in front of the glass, and a fence gate against the comparator. 
Place chains against the buttons so that the ends are facing the settle center, like so, leaving the space above the bed closest to the center. Put an observer against the composter pointing down. Back on top of the cells, place a note block on the observer, a solid block to the side and a temporary block on the gate. Standing on this, aim at the block corner to place a dispenser facing the center. Follow this with an observer on the note block. Place chains with the help of the temporary block and then remove it. Back on top, place a solid block on the observer, note block away from the center and seal lantern on the middle change with glass diagonal. From below, add an observer against the glass and glass above the chain. Head to the top, place an observer above the note block, a sticky piston to the side facing the center and a redstone block on its face. Add three repeaters on full delay with a solid block in the corner and glass on the note block behind. Place a solid block on the observer and five leaves like so with glass on the solid block. Add two sticky pistons with a slime block on their head. Place a note block and sea lantern at the back and four leaves forming a tube. Add observers pointing up and to the right and continue the tube with glass. One thing I forgot to do here is put a button in the tube just above the leaf layer, be sure to add that. Continue with the tube and the observer tower three blocks up, with glass on the bottom observer. Place a sticky piston facing the center with a redstone block. Add a lamp or block away and use glass to complete the tube. Use two temporary blocks to place a sea lantern at the top of the tube. Above a sea lantern, pillar up two blocks and place an obsidian block. Continue this line till the last sea lantern and go two blocks extra with a solid block at the end. Then turn and repeat. Inside the square, add another square of solid blocks, then glass in the corners of that, filling in the line between the glass with solid blocks. Within that, add another obsidian square similar to the first one, with the same solid block square on the inside. Extend the corners four blocks out and add an obsidian line a block from the end, filling everything else with solid blocks. Finish the portal frames, adding glass in the corners and above the obsidian. In the center of the farm, add four fences, a block above the 2x2 of glass. Fill up 13 blocks and on the side of the 13th, add four glass in the center of the farm, with fences on top. You should be just below the sea lanterns. Fill it up with the top obsidian level, does not have to be exact, and make a centered 6x6 platform of glass. Jump over to the portal area and in each corner, Add trapdoors and an iron bar with a turtle leg on top. Head to the cells again and add a solid block next to the sticky pistons and two glass like so. Temporarily break a strip of glass in the floor area and make a path and staircase up to it from the breeder. In front of the pillar of the beds, add a temporary block. When the villagers sleep at night, place the chains back and remove the temporary block in front of every cell which has the, all three beds occupied. Make a shoot for the pillagers with water at the bottom from the portal to the glass levels if you have pillagers in the nether, or bring them over from where you have them in the overworld. If you don't have them already, you can follow the steps here. Light one of the farm's portals, then make a portal on the nether roof at the farm's x and z coordinates divided by 8. Go over to the location of a pillager outpost and make a portal there. Load two pillagers through the portal and trap them in a boat near the portal. Stand in a place such that the portal is between you and the pillagers and let them attempt to shoot you until their crossbows break. Name tag them and both them over to where you have built the farm. Release one and push it through and into the chute you made earlier. Nudge it into the corner of the fence and block it in. Repeat this with the second pillager. And then remove the temporary blocks. Light up the portals and stand in the middle of the topmost platform. Take down the X and Z coordinates as well as the Y coordinate with four subtracted from it. Divide the X and Z by 8, removing any decimals after, and write all the new coordinates down. Also take down the facing direction when looking forward with the clock on your left. Head to the nether and go or dig to the spot which matches the new coordinates you wrote down. Build a simple portal perpendicular to the facing direction you noted earlier. Head through briefly to confirm the link.
Dig out a 9x6 area about 20 to 25 blocks deep. On the side 90 degrees to the facing direction you marked, build a portal under the side of the first with it having the second block towards the direction marked. Set up the blocks like so, making sure you have the sticky pistons face you. Place a block above, a string next to the glass, and an observer looking at the string. Add a sea lantern on the obsidian and solid block on the sticky piston, with a full delay repeater on it, pointing into another block. Place 5 blocks like so, a normal repeater, and comparators pointing in opposite direction, with dust on the blocks. Place a block where the comparator is pointing, with a solid block diagonal, adding dust on the lower one. On said lower block, place a redstone torch. Leave a gap and place a block below with the dust on top and a block behind the sticky piston. Facing the block with dust, add a repeater on the third setting and a similar repeater next to it facing the other direction. Add a torch on the side of the block and two dust to the other end. Place a block one higher and dust on that too which should connect to the piston. Place glass and obsidian like so, keeping the system spawn proof. And when you jump in, you should be launched through the frame. Now come to the top portal, and on the side of the aforementioned facing direction, place trapdoors like so. Leave two blocks and add a four wide, four tall wall of glass. Place the eight trapdoors on this wall and open them. Using glass panes, connect the wall to the portal. On the opposite side, make a 2x4 glass floor with a 3 tall glass wall at the end and glass panes on the side. Below the portal on the trapper side, make a 4x4 glass wall and repeat below on the other wall. Continue the glass panes but only 3 blocks down. Fill in the floor with soul sand and add signs a block above them. Carefully place lava above the signs making sure not to jump and place twisting vines at the bottom. Under the soul sand right above the tube with string, place a temporary block with a downwards facing dropper. Add hoppers on the top and sides making sure they point like this. Place the remaining hoppers so that 5 on each side point to one of the middle hoppers. Opposite the side of the dropper with a hopper, place a solid block leaving a one block gap and add another diagonally down. Place a comparator facing away and a sticky piston on the side of the block. Add an observer pointing towards the dropper on its face and add another facing the opposite way so that when the pistons extend, they look at each other and clock. Add glass above the piston and solid block and below the dropper place your powdered snow surrounded by glass. Light up both the portals if you haven't already and head through. In the overworld, go to the side opposite the clock Leave two or three blocks from the clock and build a portal here. When you go through it, you should end up at the bottom portal in the nether. This part is optional and was a recommendation by a commenter from my first video by the name of Isaiah Porte. Make a bridge to the trapdoor wall and place a boat in the middle of the blocks. Continue the bridge till you reach some zermified piglins and let them chase you to the boat, blocking up so that only one comes through. Use carts or other methods if you are unsure about the safety. When at the boat area, run around and let it walk near the boat and get picked up. Remove the bridges and if you still have piglins aggroed on you, simply fly over 128 blocks away and come back. In the overworld, you can take down the scaffolding platform, kill any golems that may have spawned below the farm and clear up the breeder blocks. Fill up all the buckets you have and put one in each dispenser. A final checklist for the farm. The pillager should be lowered, this observer below the rail, no blocks near the bench, and buckets in all the dispensers. Now access the second dropper from the right and place any one item in it. And when the night comes,
you should start seeing the golem spawn after a few cycles. Using a free camp mod will help with this. If you still don't see any golem spawns, head down to the clock, turn it off, and when the piston finishes the retracting, turn it back on. You should also notice the drops returning from the nether through the bottom portal. This means that the farm is fully working and chunk loading itself. You can leave it running, fly away, and it'll continue producing iron until you turn it off. Thanks for watching and hopefully building the farm. Be sure to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Do check out the people I linked in the end screen and description for some great farms and tutorials. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.